Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today. We still have a couple people logging on, so we're just going to give them a couple minutes and then we'll get started. All right, it looks like we have some new people with us, so we're going to kick this off. My name is Grace Shallow, and I work with Katz Peers. If you're not familiar with Katz Peers, we are a benefit advisory firm based in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and we really focus on three stories for employers, which is improving financial services, administrative efficiency, and the topic of our webinar today, helping employees become exceptional benefit consumers. So we have our Director of Client Engagement with us, Christy Magnata, who's gonna run through this presentation. Before we get started, just a few quick housekeeping items. You will see a toolbar on the right-hand side. Um, that is where you can ask questions. We encourage all interaction throughout the event today, and I will be fielding those questions with Chrissy at the end of the presentation. And if you are joining for SHRM slash HRCI credits, I will be sending those certificates out later today, so you'll be sure to get that. Um, and without any further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Chrissy Magnata. Thanks, Grace. Good morning, everybody. Um, we felt like this was a really timely topic. I know that a lot of employers renew their benefits. Um, you know, what we say is fourth quarter, right? So whether that is October, November, December, but most popular time of year is definitely gonna be that January 1 um, renewal date. So many of you may be going through open enrollment or ramping up for open enrollment. So today's discussion is really gonna be centered around how to help educate your employees in a very difficult um, you know, topic, which is all things healthcare and health insurance. Um, but, you know, hopefully today we'll be able to walk away or you'll be able to walk away with um, just a few nuggets or, or things that you can maybe apply within your organization um, to just help your employees maybe better understand their benefits or better understand how to utilize their benefits. Um, so hopefully this is going to be a great presentation for you guys today. Um, so I am usually in Grace's seat. I'm going to try to get rid of my own camera because I don't think I need to see me. Um, so just starting off with today's conversation. Oh, there we go. Um, so healthcare is a very difficult, is very difficult to navigate. It leaves employees feeling helpless and frustrated. And we talk to our employers about this all the time. You know, employers, they spend a lot of money on providing health insurance to their employees. Um, for most people, it's their second largest expense next to payroll. So when you put all this time and effort into putting together a comprehensive benefit plan, and sometimes your employees um, may feel like this, right? They might feel helpless, they might feel frustrated, and then ultimately that gives them the perception that their benefits suck. And that's obviously not what we want, right? We want employees to feel like their employers are supporting them and their employers are providing them with really the best, best benefits that they can for their employees and for their families. So before employees can really appreciate their benefits, they have to understand them. And I understand there is so much that goes into this that can be really overwhelming. Um, but hopefully today, like I said, we're, you're gonna walk away with a few nuggets to be able to provide information to employees and just kind of help them a little bit as they kind of navigate through some of this stuff. So this was, um, a statistic that we pulled from one of our uh, surveys from one of our partners MetLife, but a third of employees believe that their benefits are hard to understand and wish there were more communication from their company leaders. So I know some of you are, are familiar with passive enrollments or, you know, uh, passive open enrollments, I should say, or maybe, um, you know, just providing inf information to employees in dribs and drabs and, you know, or maybe you guys are providing a full comprehensive suite of communications, but the employees feel a little bit overwhelmed with how to really decipher through some of that information.
Um, so really the foundation of this is healthcare versus health insurance. And I know that that is really a very kind of basic concept, but um, I'm sure a, a lot of you have heard this, right? Um, we deserve free healthcare or my health insurance should pay for everything. And sometimes these two become interchangeable, um, but they really are two separate functions. So if you're going to be helping your employees understand how to move through utilizing their health insurance and seeking the best health care, they need to understand the difference between the two. And, you know, I always love using analogies. And I understand this analogy may not be perfect, but it's relatable for everybody. I like to use the analogy of uh, car insurance, right? You get into a car accident, you bring your car to an auto mechanic. That auto mechanic fixes the car, right? They're, they're servicing the car, they're fixing the car, but that auto mechanic needs to get paid. So when it comes time to pay your auto mechanic, um, your auto insurance, if you have comprehensive coverage, um, will ultimately pay the mechanic for fixing the car. And it really is the same concept when it comes to healthcare and health insurance. You know, I like to really start off a lot of these conversations with reminding employees that health care is a business. Every hospital is different. Every network, uh, hospital network is different. Every provider is different, whether that be a primary care doctor or maybe it's um, going to uh, a, a labs to get, to get blood work done or maybe you're getting some kind of um, MRI or radiology. Every time you walk into a building, um, that is a, a different business that you're walking into every single time. So we really like to help employees understand that when it comes to really be, when it comes down to becoming the best healthcare consumer, the thing to start with is understanding where to go for care, as well as how does your health insurance um, affect where you go for care. So the keys to benefit education are really just, again, creating that foundation. So once you really help your employees understand that healthcare and health insurance are two separate functions and that they really need to look at them separately, now you can get into all that fun stuff, right? Um, I really love this, right? The, the spell it out, HSA, FSA, DCA, HRA, WTTH, right? What does that really mean? Um, the, the best thing I can, I can give you today is, is to talk in easy to understand format. Not every employee is going to understand what an HSA is. So make sure you're being conscious to say health spending account. Not every employee is gonna understand what an HRA is. Be conscious to say health reimbursement arrangement and then explain to them what that means. What we find when we see that there are some low utilization or low participation in some of these really great financial programs, it truly comes down to education. It truly comes down to the employee maybe not understanding all of the benefits of utilizing and taking advantage of these financial platforms. So just get down to the basics and really just help them understand what that means. What is a health spending account and why does that favor them to participate in that. And ultimately, when they understand what those programs mean, it's gonna help them make better decisions around um, deciding what health plan to adopt, um, deciding what is gonna work best for maybe themselves or their family when it comes to choosing the plan for their open enrollment. And then you really wanna start with those basics, right? What is a copay? What is the deductible? What is coinsurance? What is an out-of-pocket maximum? If you asked your employees today what their MOOP was, they probably wouldn't be able to answer that question. But these are really important functions of how their health insurance is uh, run and how they can utilize their health insurance. So really getting down to the basics and explaining to them what a deductible means, what coinsurance means, Again, that's going to help them make the better, the best decision when it comes time to open enrollment, but it's also gonna educate them as they're using the health insurance throughout the year to really understand what is gonna be applied to them and maybe what is not going to be applied to them. Understanding an ex explanation of benefits. Um, you know, what is an allowable charge? A lot of people will kind of get an EOB, they think maybe it's a bill, maybe they don't know it's a bill, maybe they know it's not a bill and they just push it aside. But what's important is to understand when you get that EOB, that explanation of benefit statement from your carrier, open it up and take a look at it. You have to make sure that 
what is being applied to your insurance. And really, it all comes down to what has been coded properly from the provider is accurate. Um, you know, we see this all the time, right? Employee will get a, an EOB. Maybe they even get a bill and they say, wow, why do I owe all of this money? Because I have health insurance and shouldn't my health insurance cover this? Again, it goes back to the function of understanding, do you have a high deductible plan? What, is, what applies to a high deductible? But also understanding how to read and understand that explanation of benefits because there are people, right? People are pushing out these EOBs. They're, they're the ones that are putting in the code. They're the ones that are handling billing at these providers and sending that over to the carriers. People make mistakes. So it's important for you to encourage your employees to get involved, understand their EOB, understand what an allowable charge means. And if there is a question, giving them the proper guidance and giving them the proper resource to really understand what applies to them and what affects them. In network, you know, it, we talk about this all the time. Sometimes people maybe don't realize how their insurance functions and what is an in-network provider and what is an out-of-network provider. Maybe the carrier changed over open enrollment and the specialist that you used to see is now out of network. Um, what does that really mean to the employee and how does that affect their bottom line and how does that affect their pocket? Well, I'm sure all of you on the call today understand if it's an out of network provider, they're going to pay, right? They're going to pay a lot more money. Sometimes they're going to, it's not even covered at all unless it's an emergency. Um, so again, educating your employees and helping them understand what in-network versus out-of-network and why they should care about that is really going to be um, the foundation of setting the tone for the rest of your communication strategy. And then really educating them on providers, right? This is one of my favorite conversations. When to go to emergency room, urgent care, and telemedicine. You know, I could argue 20 years ago, 15 years ago, if it was a Saturday and your child had an earache and, you know, they had an ear infection and your doctor was closed, the only other option you had was to walk into the emergency room. And a lot of people still stick with that mentality. Um, the emergency room for non-emergent situations is one of the worst places you can go. It's absolutely going to be more expensive. You're not going to get necessarily the, um, the care that you would have gotten from going to your primary care doctor. Um, but again, ultimately, if they understand, if they're in a high deductible plan, if they walk into an emergency room, they're going to get hit with a pretty big bill depending on what their deductible looks like. So we really want to educate our employees in understanding where to go. If you have telemedicine, promote it. Encourage your employees to utilize it. One of my favorite things is to um, encourage employees to go ahead and download and, and uh, download whatever app they may have or log into whatever website they may have to access telemedicine and then plug in all your information. Because when you're sick or when your child's sick, the last thing you want to do is fill out a form um, and, and upload all of that information to just speak to a doctor. So if it's already set and ready for you, you're going to be a little bit more likely to use it. And what I find is that once you've used telemedicine once and you kind of get over that stigma of talking to a doctor over the phone or having a virtual call, um, most employees really appreciate having that, that service available to them, especially when they have a situation like I just explained on a Saturday or an evening or something like that. And again, you know, a lot of these are going to be a little bit more cost effective for employees. So, uh, you know, sometimes you'll have a telemedicine feature that is zero cost to employees. Fantastic. Sometimes it's a lower copay. It could be a $40 copay. That's still going to be a lot cheaper than walking into the emergency room. And then, of course, knowing when to use urgent care. Urgent care is fantastic for those non-emergent situations. A lot of urgent cares today can do something simple like stitches. Um, some of them can even do an x-ray right there on site. So um, really educate your employees in understanding where they can go to seek care. The importance of using generics. You know, some of you may have uh, plans structured to encourage employees to use generics over brand name drugs. Um, but if you don't, encouraging employees to use, to use a generic uh, prescription over a brand name could save them a significant amount of money, as well as save your plan a lot of money, which will then um, hopefully help you come renewal time. And then really how to manage that spending when it comes around far, uh, the uh, pharmaceuticals. So utilizing mail order, utilizing those low, low cost gene, uh, retail generics. And GoodRx is something that I'm sure all of you have seen the commercials. This is something we push with all of our clients. It is a fantastic 
service. This is off of insurance, so this is not something that if you used it, it would apply to a deductible or it would be run through your employee's insurance. But oftentimes you can receive a coupon or maybe be guided to a pharmacy that has a lower cost, has your prescription at a lower cost that may even be cheaper than what you're paying if you put it through insurance. So I always, always encourage employees to check out RX first. And then of course that importance of primary care physician. Um, everything starts with primary care and preventative care. You really wanna encourage your employees to continue to build a relationship with a primary care provider and to seek those um, preventative screenings as necessary. It could be something as simple as just putting out a one-page flyer. Hey, as a reminder, if you're of this age, you should be getting a mammogram. Um, if you haven't had your annual physical done yet this year, please make sure you do so. Make sure you go to see the dentist for your annual cleanings and you see your, your, um, your eye doctor to get a, a, an annual done uh, just to make sure that everything is, is um, that you're healthy, right? And, and we all know that if you are healthy and you are finding things, um, you're, you're on top of your health and you're on top of your health care, that less, you're less likely to have a significant um, health issue down the road because if you can catch it early, obviously we all know that that's better off than catching it late. Pricing transparency, um, you know, in our world, in the benefit world, uh, we are, are um, understanding that there are actually some new laws coming out where um, carriers and um, hospital systems and networks and even brokers now have to, um, you know, really disclose what a lot of those fees and services look like. Um, but when it comes to pricing transparency, understanding that not all providers are created equal is a really important discussion to have with your employees. I always like to use an example of an MRI, right? You can walk into a South Jersey radiology, um, for example, and, and you can get an MRI and maybe that MRI would cost $800. You could also walk into um, Jefferson or Penn or any other hospital, hospital related network and get that same MRI with the same exact results, same machine, and now your bill is $5,000. So being a, becoming a smarter healthcare consumer really under, is really about understanding where to go for the cost of care and understanding um, you know, the differences in the cost. And there are some things as an employer that you can provide to your employees to help them understand the differences in cost. So just a, a few examples here, um, you know, a lot of times the carrier will have a cost estimator right there on their website. So if your carrier is Aetna, or if it's a, a Blues Network or um, Cigna, United Healthcare, a lot of times you can go directly to the website and it will help and they will help guide you to the, um, you know, kind of some cost estimators and, and giving you an idea of what a uh, particular procedure might cost you. And then there are some other options like Healthcare Blue Book. This is a program, it is a third party vendor, but what they do is they take, um, you know, uh, they, they, they have a kind of like an algorithm and they, they take um, kind of outcome based results. So based on the provider, say for instance, you have to have a knee replacement. Well, just because you are seeing an orthopedic for your hand doesn't mean that that orthopedic is um, the top doctor for maybe a knee replacement. So what they do is they kind of look at outcomes, um, you know, based off of uh, um, really the, you know, the procedure um, and, and, and they look at it more of on a holistic basis. So from start to finish, right, that even talks about post care, less likely to go back into the hospital for, um, you know, additional care or anything like that. And they pair that up with what the actual cost of the procedure is. And they use a very simple algorithm um, and, and they have a, you know, kind of like a, a stoplight um, mentality, right? So if it's a green provider, that means go. That means that they have great outcomes and they're cost effective. If they're a red provider, that means eh, they maybe don't have the best outcomes and they're definitely on the higher side. Um, and then you can also pair that with an incentive to encourage employees to use this program. So if an employee is going to Healthcare Blue Book um, and they use that to find a provider, maybe they get a, a $50 check in the mail or maybe they get a gift card or something like that. So you're kind of incentivizing employees to use that program. And then we talk about care coordination. You know, we talked a little bit about this, right? Urgent care versus telemedicine versus ER, but really, you know, knowing where to go, but giving your employees the, the, um, the tools to be able to find 
the right providers. So I love to say to leverage technology. We have some great partners that we work with. Um, HealthJoy is a really great uh, program out there and uh, it makes it really easy for employees to find providers. Um, it has, does a whole bunch of other things that I think are really beneficial for helping employees navigate through care. Um, but we won't get into that too much today. Um, Health Advocate, Rightway, these are just a few examples of third-party vendors that you can use to help your employees work through um, you know, finding providers, finding lower cost providers, finding providers with better outcomes. Um, and you know, a lot of these services can even help with some of that previous discussion that we had on understanding explanation of benefits, maybe getting some claim, um, claim things worked out, right? If they get a bill that they don't understand, they can help them look into some claims issues and, and find out um, you know, if there's something that they can do to help the employee with that bill. And really it all comes down to advocacy. Advocacy is so important for your employees. Um, you know, for, for people in our industry, um, obviously we do this every day, right? We understand um, a lot of how the carriers work. We understand um, how providers work, but we do not expect our clients, employees to understand every little nuance when it comes to dealing with some of these issues. Um, so really encouraging your employees to number one, be their, be their own advocate, ask questions. It's okay to go to your doctor and you know, if they're pushing you in a certain direction, it's okay to ask why. It's okay to say, listen, I know you want me to go see this specialist, but I would prefer to see this specialist. What are your thoughts on that? If you get a bill, like I said, that maybe you don't understand, be your own advocate, question it. It's okay, it's okay to look a little bit deeper into that and understand, is this bill accurate? Why do I have to pay this bill? Why do, why do these charges apply to me? And use the resources that are available to you. Our, our number one um, recommendation for anybody sitting in an HR administrative level that's dealing with uh, kind of that in-between of, of health benefits and employees, we always, always encourage that the employees call us directly. Like I had said, we are in this industry, we understand the carriers, we understand how to get answers, we understand where to go for help. Um, so we encourage that the employees call us directly and that we can help them through some of those questions and some of those difficulties. Um, HR is also a great tool. However, we always like to throw out the little caveat there. Um, be careful not to get into too much on the medical side of the employee issue, right? There are some things to consider when it comes to HIPAA. Um, and really, if you're in a position where you could potentially uh, be hiring or firing employees, you really want to stay away from anything related to their, their, uh, their health. Um, and then leveraging technology, you know, like I said, there's a, a great um, partners out there that we work with that really help um, give the employee a resource in understanding, um, you know, how they can how they can seek help when it comes to, um, you know, again finding providers or maybe looking into some claims. Maybe it's a pre-authorization that they're having difficulty with. Maybe they walked into the pharmacy and they can't get a prescription. Um, you know, these are all really frustrating situations for an employee to be in. So it's important that, that you provide them with resources, but they also understand where to go for those resources. Communication is key. So, um, you know, coming up with a communication strategy is going to be very important. Understanding your demographics, understanding the types of employees that you're, that you're speaking to, understanding maybe how your company is set up. Obviously, COVID has changed a lot for us, right? Now we have employees that are working remotely that maybe weren't before. Um, we are, you know, in a very active job market situation, right? I think anybody, any, anybody that's sitting on this call today that's an employer can understand that most employers are having difficulty uh, attracting and retaining employees. So really helping to change that employee's perception around how you communicate with employees, um, you know, can really help them uh, feel like you're, uh, you as an employer care. So coming up with a proper communication strategy that fits your specific organization is gonna be, um, you know, kind of that first priority in rolling out uh, some of these tactics that we're gonna get into a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> so again, all eyes on you, employees, are focused on uh, the employer and what they are doing to create an better environment and culture. They all wanna feel like their employer cares, 
um, whether that, that they care about their health, um, their financial status, whatever that might be, every employer wants to feel, every employee wants to feel their employer cares about them. Okay, so tips for engaging your team. Understand your audience. Every single employee population is different. You may see some similarities depending on industry, depending on um, you know maybe where you sit geographically, um, but you really want to make sure that you're understanding who you're speaking to, and that you're you're uh, providing information in a way that um, that particular person can really digest easily and understand easily. So speak across all generations. Um, we're really in this is unique. Um, time frame, right, where um, we have multiple generations in our workforces. So you want to make sure that you're understanding um, maybe what each generation looks for and what they appreciate and really how they, um, like I had mentioned, digest that information. Maybe your younger generation wants technology. Maybe they want videos. They just want quick, easy to understand little tidbits to help them through whatever situation they're working through. But then you might have people on the uh, maybe on uh, that are a little bit older um, on our older generations that like that personal touch that are used to that personal touch that want to have a live person to speak to um, and maybe they uh, they need a little bit more um, uh, I guess uh, communication to help them through understanding what they're working through so really understand who you're talking to we all went virtual during COVID. So, you know, a lot of us ha had to take a remote approach, especially to last year's open enrollment. But this year, you know, we have some workforces that are coming back together. Um, you know, some of our employees are still remote. Some of ever, maybe everybody's back in the office. So you really have to understand how to um, roll out some of these communication strategies. And, you know, while being able to um, provide information in a virtual environment is very helpful, um, especially for some people that maybe can't be there physically on site, is that what your staff really needs? Maybe they're missing out on those in-person open enrollment meetings. So maybe you have to think of some um, additional hybrid ways to roll out open enrollment this year instead of doing you know, your typical go-to meeting or your typical Teams meeting. Maybe you wanna have some smaller uh, groups together to go through open enrollment. And then definitely considering language needs. You know, a lot of our, our employers have uh, multilingual populations. And I understand that that may be difficult depending on the type of language or how many different languages are in your organization, but being able to provide tools where an employee can, can um, access information in their, their home or their native language, um, they're going to understand a lot easier. And I know that's kind of um, without being, I should, you know, it, it's kind of without being said, right? But to think of some different ways that you can um, provide information to employees in their native language, there are some options out there that are very cost effective. Um, you know, we'll get into this a little bit, but using technology, we talked a little bit about that. A lot of your benefit administration systems can be translated in multiple languages. So if an employee can go through their open enrollment, through a software that is in their own language, they're gonna be more likely to make better decisions and to really understand um, some of the decisions that they're making. And really it starts with open enrollment. You know, um, make sure you're connecting with your employees through multiple avenues. Um, you know, make sure that you're not just giving them one you know, a one page piece of paper and saying, okay, now go pick your benefits. You wanna make sure that, um, you know, they have multiple ways to access information and multiple ways to, um, to really understand that information. So the difference between a benefit guide and a benefit summary, you know, I'm sure all of you have seen benefit summaries. It comes from the carrier. It's really kind of basic. Um, it does give a lot of information, but sometimes it can be a little hard to understand. So rolling out a benefit guide, which is a pamphlet or a booklet that really um, simplifies some of the information that needs to be provided to the employees, um, can help them make better decisions. It gives them a little bit more information. It does take a little bit more work. However, they will be all the more grateful for having as much information as they can, especially if they can take that home and bring that to their spouse or anybody else that may be involved in making some decisions around their health plans. 
virtual options obviously expand um, you know ways to connect so uh, again if you're using in-person meetings maybe offering a hybrid or a virtual meeting in addition to that would help uh, with some of those employees that maybe can't be there physically in person and we talked about this right the benefit a benefit administration system not only does that help um, kind of push out some of that information in different languages, but it also helps to enhance the employee experience. A lot of these Ben Admin systems have decision-making tools embedded in them. It is a place to kind of keep all of your benefit information. So you, that benefit guide that we took, talked about can be housed right there in the benefit administration system. Maybe you have some videos. If you have a health spending account and you want an educational video to be able to provide to your employees, that can be housed right there on the, that system. And what's also nice is the employee can go home and include their spouse in some of these decisions. So whether or not you're able to roll out a, um, a virtual or um, you know, maybe you're doing a, 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 an, insight, an on-site open enrollment meeting um, after hours and you include and invite spouses to come to that, um, giving that, that benefit administration system to help them make some of those decisions, um, you know, it's just an added layer uh, to be able to help include all parties when it comes to understanding the benefits and also making those decisions around benefits. This is a really nice piece. We put this together last year as we were trying to understand um, how to provide information to all of our clients employees in a virtual world because a lot of our clients were um, really shut down and everybody had to go virtual right so this is a landing page what i like about this is it is a one pager so everything is really kind of condensed to one page it's not that 40 page benefit guide that i had referenced earlier but you could but what we do is we embed links in here so we can email this out to employees and you see down here at the bottom, we have uh, a benefit guide that has um, a link embedded right there in that landing page, important legal notices. Again, if you have videos, anything else that might be relatable to your benefits that year, you can embed right here in that landing page. But it does not end there. And we talk about this all the time. Open enrollment happens. It's it's usually overwhelming for a lot of employees. They come into this open enrollment meeting, whether it's in person or it's virtual, or maybe it's passive and you're just, you know, kind of giving them information and letting them make decisions on their own. Um, and really what the employee does is they say, okay, is anything changing? Am I going to lose any of my doctors? And how much am I going to pay? Is my cost going up? And at that point, once they understand the answers to those questions, they're probably not listening to everything else that you're saying. And that's okay, we understand that a lot of this is very overwhelming. So it's very important to come up with a year-round communication strategy. So rolling out open enrollment is gonna be the start of that, right? Giving employees all of the information that they need right there up front to make decisions. But then as they're going through the year, as they're, as they're going through their plan year and they're maybe going out and seeking care or, um, you know, as they're uh, maybe understanding, you know, where they can go to choose doctors or things like that, um, you know, providing this information in smaller segments throughout the year is going to be a lot easier for your employee to digest. So I like to use mini meetings. Um, these are some of my favorites, and any clients that are sitting on the call today that I've done these with um, can really speak to, I think, the value of these mini meetings. But what it is is a short 15, 20-minute meeting where we talk about maybe two to three topics and we remind employees about some of the programs that they have. We remind them that they have advocacy services available to them. We maybe educate them a little bit on that topic of preventative care and seeing a primary doctor. Maybe we talk about you know, the differences between telemedicine, urgent care, and ER. It could be something very simple, but when you're talking about it throughout the year, you're just reminding them um, that this is available and, and, and to, to keep this top of mind, to, to help, make them, help them make better decisions as they're going through the year. And really to kind of come up with that plan up front to make sure that it doesn't fall behind. We all wear many hats throughout the day, right? Once we get through open enrollment, and any of you that are sitting on this call that, are, that have gone through some difficult open enrollments, maybe it was a carrier change, maybe you just have a lot of employees, maybe it's a manual or paper process for you. As soon as you get through open enrollment, you're like, okay, thank God, I can close this out and move on to my everyday life. And sometimes we can forget 
to circle back on some of these topics. So really planning that out on a year long strategy and having um, an idea of when you're gonna maybe create some of these touches, maybe when you're gonna roll out some of these mini meetings, maybe you're gonna push out um, a payroll stuffer. Uh, having that planned out throughout the year is just gonna make sure you're keeping that on track. And I highly encourage you to um, you know, lean on your, your broker, your advisor, your consultant to help you with that. Um, you know, what I like to do with our clients is after open enrollment, or maybe it's a pre open enrollment discussion, really depending on how all of that falls. Um, but we come up with a, a, a strategy around communicating with employees. And at that point, we decide, okay, this is what we want to roll out this year. These are the topics that are really important. These are some areas we want to focus on. And this is the best way to communicate with employees. We can put that strategy in place. And then that way throughout the year, we're making sure that it's happening. Um, for any of you that joined our MetLife uh, Benefit Trends Study survey a couple of weeks ago, um, probably know the value in what this survey brought. They brought a ton of information to us. For those of you that did not join us, please feel free to reach out after this. We're happy to share that study with you. But a lot of these statistics came from that particular study. So seven in 10 employees want to hear about their benefits from business leaders after sign up. So employees are looking for this, right? Employees understand that it's difficult for them to um, really remember everything that you're throwing out them for open enrollment. And, and they're almost leaning on their employers to, um, to really increase, right? 80% of employers are increasing their benefit communications or intend to do so because of this ask from their employees. So it's important to keep this uh, at top of mind and really start to work on a communication strategy. This is just an example of um, a calendar that we like to use. You'll see here, not only everything is, or not everything is about the employees, right? So we have some mini meetings in here. Um, we have engagement meetings. Maybe we have some um, wellness uh, briefs that we're pushing out. But some of this is also for you as the employer to make sure you're staying on top of everything. So having those quarterly benefit reviews, how is everything running? How are your employees feeling? Have you heard anything? Um, is, is anybody having any difficulty, if difficulty with any particular area of the benefits? Um, and then just supporting HR and, and um, leadership, um, you know, on their end and, and, and looking at ways that you can um, maybe keep yourself in the know. Obviously, joining today's webinar is, is a great start, but understanding maybe how things are evolving throughout the year. Um, if COVID taught us anything, it is that every situation can be very fluid and things can change very quickly. So even though something may sound or look really great at open enrollment, six months later, um, there may be a, a vendor out there or, or a solution or maybe an idea that you can apply off of renewal that will help your employees. And then really just going beyond the insurance. So understanding how the insurance works is obviously, um, you know, really going to be key for employees to understand how to utilize their insurance. But really understanding where to go for care is, is, is equally as important. So, you know, encouraging, again, the PCP relationships and preventative care. I said this a couple of times, this is a reoccurring theme, but this is, I think is one of the most important takeaways that you could walk away with today. Um, reminding your employees about access to mental health resources. This is another thing that COVID really has brought to light um, and it is the need for employees to have a resource if they are struggling with something related to mental health. And a lot of times you have programs available. Maybe it's through one of your ancillary carriers. You know, if you're using, um, you know, a principal or a MetLife or a Mutual of Omaha for your dental or something like that, a lot of times they have an, an, an EAP, an Employee Assistance Program, baked right into the plan. So it's just a matter of communicating that to employees, making sure they understand that that's available to them. Because, again, during open enrollment, you may talk about it, but it's going to get lost in the shuffle. So just reminding them that they have that access. Same thing with telemedicine. You know, telemedicine has been around for a really long time, but it is one of the most underutilized programs that are out there. And in my opinion, that's one of the most valuable programs. If you can um, get a, a phone call with a doctor within 15 minutes and you can have a prescription sent to your pharmacy for something that um, maybe you deal with on a consistent basis, maybe your, your 
uh, prone to sinus infections and you don't want to go to the primary care doctor because you don't want to take time off of work or maybe it's just the primary care doctor is, is backed up or whatever the reason may be, you can utilize telemedicine for that. And a lot of employees maybe don't understand exactly how telemedicine works how to access it or what they can use it for. So educating them throughout the year that this resource is available to them and giving them a little bit of insight on how to utilize it and why it's important to utilize it will definitely promote um, you know, them to engage a little bit more. And then focusing on financial wellness, you know, this is something that I think uh, sometimes get put, gets pushed to the, the back burner for a lot of employers. But you know, I think we can argue that a lot of our employees deal with financial stress, whether that be a credit card that they need to pay off, or maybe they feel like they're living paycheck to paycheck. And of course, if they're having financial stress, then that's going to ultimately um, you know, put a negative perception maybe on their employer. Oh, I don't get paid enough. I can't make ends meet. If you can provide them with a resource to help them manage some of that um, financial instability that they're feeling, then First off, you're gonna look like a hero, right? You're really gonna make them feel like you care, which I'm sure you do, um, but it's gonna be a fantastic resource for them. I like to say that financial wellness is really that stuff they should have taught you in high school, right? How to balance a checkbook, how to pay off um, a credit card, how to save up for a car. You know, I know that these sound very basic, but these are really important topics that a lot of your employees may be struggling with. So if you can provide a resource for them to be able to um, mitigate some, some of those financial hardships, um, you know, it, it's gonna be beneficial not just to the employee, but also to you as the employer. Um, a, a great program I like to use is Bright Dime. We did a webinar on it a couple of uh, weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. Um, but it's a very, very kind of basic service that helps employees just create a budget. It gives them some counseling. That allows them to talk to a, um, you know, a financial counselor to maybe set some goals. Um, so, again, a, a great resource and something that maybe should, uh, you know, kind of add on to to your very long to do list to think about enrolling out for either open enrollment or maybe even mid plan year. So just some current employee benefit trends that we pulled from that MetLife survey. 39% of employees say that their employer is not currently offering benefits and programs to support or improve their well-being. Now, when I look at this statistics, uh, this statistic, I can I can argue that um, the employer maybe is not currently offering something, but I could also argue that maybe the employer does have something available that the employee just doesn't know about. So again, it comes back down to that communication year round is gonna be important. Rolling this out six months later, hey, as a reminder, we have this wellness program, we have this financial wellness program, we have an EAP available. 60% of employees are interested in their employer providing a wider mix of non-medical benefits that they can choose to purchase on their own. So, you know, this could be something simple like pet insurance. You know, we have a couple of clients that offer pet insurance. It has nothing to do with medical benefits. It doesn't impact the employer. Um, it's not something you have to offer. But it, but offering something at a group rate, you know, at a, as at a um, something that you can bring into your organization as, um, you know, a, a kind of like uh, under a, a group, but maybe that the employer is not paying for, is going to get the employee a cheaper cost. So they may be more likely to engage in that product. And it might be something that they were thinking about doing on their own. But again, this is just giving them the ability to um, purchase some non-medical benefits that may be helpful for them, that might help them out. You know, I have two dogs, I have pet insurance. Sometimes I wonder if I'm wasting my money, but if God forbid one of them swallows a sock and I have a $5,000 um, you know, surgery ahead of me, I'm gonna be really happy that I have that. And then to keep employees satisfied, satisfied, employers need to offer more than just medical coverage. So yes, obviously offering health insurance is highly important, but there are so many other things that you can focus on and that you can provide to your employees um, that they will see the benefit in, and that also might not be as um, uh, costly as some of those other medical related um, coverages. So we talked about mental health, family or social health, um, financial health, and really that physical health. So these are, these are things that I think they all affect your employees' overall health, 
but they may be off that medical coverage conversation. So definitely keep into consideration some things that you can offer to your employees um, that maybe aren't included in your Aetna plan or your United Healthcare plan. And again, all eyes are employer are all eyes are on employers these days. Employees are expecting from their employers, especially in today's job market. They want to know that their employers care for them. They want to know that their employers are providing resources for them, and they want to know that um, that you're making strides in helping to better maybe some of their situations that they're dealing with. 74% of respondents agree that employee well-being is predicted to have the greatest impact in the workplace of the future. And we see this, right? We see the demand um, for, for better culture. We see the demand for employers to be more involved, to consider their employees a little bit more. And, and that really is where the trends are heading. So if you can continue to um, roll out some programs that help support this, you're going to be all the more better off in the future. The bottom line here, the employees are looking to the employers for support more now than ever before. And whether that be related to everything that happened in the past few years with the pandemic, obviously health insurance, mental health, things like that have definitely become um, kind of the forefront of conversation for a lot of employees. Um, but ultimately, you know, just is properly communicating to employees, helping them really navigate through some situations that might be difficult for them. Um, the perception from the employee of their employer is gonna be positive. And I think that's what we all want here, right? So I'm sure we have some questions. I haven't been looking at those. Grace, I know that you probably have. I see some uh, questions popping up here. Yes, we, we do have some questions. So um, the first one is obviously attraction and retention for talent is a huge pain for mm -hmm. lots of employers. So how does this conversation about benefits and making sure people are aware of the benefits you're offering factor into that? So um, when it comes to talking to employees, whether it be you're trying to retain some, some employees, and those can be some employees that are, are hugely valuable, or it could just be employees because you're, you're just trying to fill certain spots. I know a lot of employers are in that position, or maybe you're trying to attract some employees. Helping them understand what their benefits are worth, I think is one of the most important conversations you can have. So whether that be a current employee in your organization, maybe it's during open enrollment, maybe it's during a, um, a review or something like that, but coming up with a compensation summary, letting them know it's it's okay to be transparent, letting the employee know this is what your employer pays for your benefits, this is what you pay, but ultimately, this is the cost that we're putting towards having you be an employee at our company and, and looking at not just the bottom line of what is my hourly rate or what is my salary, what are my bonuses and my commissions looking like, but adding in the conversation of what the cost of healthcare is to the employer will help the employee understand um, really what it is that you're providing to them as a benefit package as a whole. And that can be related to anything, not just the health benefits as well. It could be um, you know, talking about any type of retirement um, plans that you maybe offer, if you have a 401k, if you have a match. Uh, talking about all of the things that you provide to the employee as an employee will help them understand that it's not just about that bottom line, what is in my paycheck, it'll help them understand that there are so many other things available to them as a true benefit package as a whole when they come on as an employee to the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so the next question, I think that the MetLife survey inspired an idea for someone. They said, "Should can I survey my employees about the benefits I offer? Absolutely. I highly encourage you to do that. If you have the means to do that, or even if it's just a matter of you're a smaller organization and you can just encourage a conversation, absolutely. You wanna hear from your employees. You wanna hear how they feel about the benefits. You wanna hear if they're having a difficult time. You wanna hear if they absolutely love a certain aspect of their benefits. So that way, when it comes to making some strategic decisions year over year on what you're gonna roll out to your employees, um, you know what to improve on, you know what to um, what is really important to them, and it will help you make those decisions. And then maybe if there's something that's not available to employees that you're not currently offering that they really, really would like, 
um, then you can look at offering that to them and kind of fulfilling some of their needs in that respect. Mm -hmm. And I will add that Cats Peers has an employee benefit survey that we can send to our clients and that people have used as a way to get a barometer for what people want. So if you would like that information, Chrissy can share that with you after the webinar. Thank you, Grace. Um, and you touched on this throughout the presentation, but just to reiterate again, what is a broker's role when it comes to employee education of benefits? Well, I would argue that um, the broker should be leading that. Uh, you know, while as an administrator of the benefits or as an HR person or maybe leadership, it's it's going to be up to you to really understand your organization, understand your specific employee population. The your broker or your advisor should be bringing some ideas to you. They should be um, be able to support you with resources. Um, you know, they should be able to help you come up with the communication strategy that will work best for your organization. So I would say the broker or the, the consultant's role is huge. You know, for any of our clients on the call today that have worked with me, that's a lot of what we do, right? Grace is my communication specialist. She's the one that puts out all those wonderful pieces that we uh, push out to our, um, to our groups. But I also sit down with our groups and I, I, I have a, a conversation around what's going to work for your employees. What is it that you want to focus on this year? And then we come up with a strategy on how to roll that out. Yeah, so definitely client specific and there's no one size fits all strategy. No, there is not. <laughs> um, well, that is all the questions we have today. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for that fantastic presentation, Chrissy. And again, I will be sending those certificates out for the SHRM credits. So everyone on the call can expect to receive that later on. Um, and just let us know if anything we talked about you want more information about and we'll be happy to share that after the call. Thank you, Grace. Thanks, Chrissy. Thank you, everybody.